in this video of Arduino Cloud tutorial series, I'll be showing you how you can make an IoT based smart locking system using an Arduino board, Arduino Cloud and some simple electronic components. I'll be giving you complete instructions including the circuit diagram, the PCB files if you want to make a PCB and complete course and instructions for you to make one yourself. So without further ado, let's get started. First, we will take a look at the circuit. I used Altium Designer to drop the circuit and design the PCB. Altium is a PCB design tool that can be used to create simple PCBs for hobby projects or complex and multi-layer PCBs for industrial use. It's so easy to create our own PCBs using Altium and if you are a DIY electronics enthusiast, you are going to love it. An Altium subscription includes Altium 365 which lets you design, share and manufacture your projects everything in one place. Secure centralized cloud storage allows you to share your designs and ideas with teammates or clients very easily. You can even collaborate on your projects with friends and share real-time feedbacks. You can download and install the free trial version from the link in the description below. And here we are in Altium Designer. Here I'll be using a solenoid door lock that works on 12V. So I'll be connecting a 12V DC adapter right here. The input power is connected to a 7805 voltage regulator. 7805 is a 5 volt regulator which will convert an input voltage of 7 to 32 volt to a 5 volt DC supply. There are indicator LEDs across various points for easy troubleshooting. And right here, there are two switches. One is a relay that is turned on by a transistor VC547 whose base is connected to digital pin 3. And then there is a MOSFET that is connected to digital pin 5 of the Arduino. Here you should also see a buzzer that is turned on and off by this transistor right here. This transistor is connected to digital pin 6 of the Arduino. You can either connect the lock to the MOSFET or the relay which can be turned on and off programmatically. I decided to connect the lock to the MOSFET so that I can connect some other device like a bulb or something to the relay. You can use other switches to connect any additional device like a lamp or a motor to open the door or whatever you want. I will leave the link to the schematics and the PCB design in the description down below so you can access it easily. Whatever you do, first thing you need to try it on a breadboard and once you are getting the output then you can use it as such or make your own PCB. And guys before going forward, if you are still watching this, that means you are really interested in robotics, home automation and other fun DIY projects using Arduino, Arduino Cloud, Raspberry Pi. If so, make sure you check out our channel. You're gonna find so many amazing useful stuff for you absolutely free. We have a lot of tutorials explaining all these things in an easy to understand manner for you to understand clearly and start building your own projects. So make sure you check that out and if you don't want to miss our future videos, make sure you subscribe our channel as well. For me, I decided to go with the PCB. I have designed a PCB layout where we can easily mount our Arduino Nano ESP32 relays, MOSFETs and other components and set this up without using messy wires and cables hanging around. And it's cool to make our own PCBs for our project, right? The board is lightweight and can be powered using a 9V battery or a 9 to 12 volt power adapter depending on the sole node low voltage. Also guys, if you are truly into electronics and PCB, check out Altium Student Lab and you can get free access to Altium Designer and Altium 365 to work with your friends and earn a certificate recognized by top industries in India. You can use your university or school email to start for free. You can try that as well for free by clicking the link in the description below. The circuit is completed, now let's go to the software part. Guys, if you don't know about Arduino Cloud, make sure you watch our previous video where we explain each and every aspect of Arduino Cloud from configuration to uploading your first sketch that will be really useful for you. So watch that first and then come to this video. I will leave the link here. As this is an IoT project, the best and easy way to do it is using Arduino Cloud. So this is my Arduino Cloud profile. So here you should be able to see Arduino Cloud door lock, right? So this is the project that we are currently working on. And when you click on that, you should be able to see all the information regarding this project. You should be able to see all the variables that are associated to this project, the board that we are working with this project, the Wi-Fi network, everything can be configured right here. And here, as you can see here under variables, we have three variables. We have one string variable that will store the value of the password. Then we have two boolean variables. One is for data sticking. The other will be associated to a button widget which we will be using to submit the password. And here, as I told you earlier, I'll be using Arduino Nano ESP32 for this project. 
So I have associated the same with this thing. And under network, I have provided my Wi-Fi name and password. The next thing we need is a dashboard or a console where we can enter the password and hit a button that will send the password to Arduino Cloud and do the authentication process. Under dashboard, you should be able to see this authenticator, which is the one that I created for this project. So if you open that, you should be able to see three widgets, right? The one on top is the value widget. And this is where we will be entering the password. And below that, this one is a status widget that will show the status of the lock. And then we have this push button widget. We will be using this button to send the password to Arduino Cloud once we have entered the password here in the value widget. As you have expected by now, the value widget is connected to the password variable and the status widget is connected to the status variable and the submit password widget is connected to the boolean submit variable. You should be able to see a lot of cool widgets that you can use with your project. A majority of them are free. You can start using it with your project right now. A few of them do need Maker Plan subscription. But if you like to try it for free, you can use our coupon code ROOTSET for a free trial to the Maker Monthly Plan to access all advanced features of Arduino Cloud such as over-the-air uploads, up to 25 things, unlimited dashboards, alert on your phones, 3 months of data retention, and much much more. You will find more information in the description below. You will need to enter your credit card information to redeem the free trial. If you cancel before the trial period is over, you won't be charged anything. But if you don't cancel it, you will be charged $6.99. Now, let's go back to the things and open our things. And on the top right here, you should be able to see a tab called sketch. Simply click on that and that will open up the sketch. And here, you should be able to see the complete sketch of our project. So let's take a look at the functions right here. So here, we have this void setup function where we will be providing all the setups and then we have the main loop function and then we have one function for each variable so these functions will be run whenever there is a change in the corresponding variable for example when the password variable changes this on password change function will be run when the status variable is changed that will cause this function to run on status change but we are mainly interested in this on submit change that is, whenever the button is pressed, it will read the value of the password and perform the authentication. And then we have one more function right here that will make the buzzer buzz in a particular pattern. And one thing that I would like to let you know here in this function is, this is not the right or the safe way to provide a password. The sensitive information like passwords, access keys, secret keys should never be hard coded in the code. These kind of sensitive information should be added in a different way. On top, right here, you should be able to see a secret tab, right? This is where we'll be saving the value as well as the variable. So here, I have created a key called secret password and a value. So this is where we'll be adding the actual value of the password. And in the main code, you should be able to simply call the variable like this. And you can use this variable for authentication checks. So once you provide the password in the widget and press on the submit button, then it will check if the value is equal to the actual password. If not, it will give you an access denied message. If that is the right password, it will unlock for 5 seconds and after 5 seconds, it will automatically lock the door. I will provide the code and the circuit in the description. So if you want, you can make modification and make your own version of it. Alright, so once this is done, you can simply upload the code. Now, you should be able to control the lock using Arduino Cloud Remote App. Simply download the app from Play Store or App Store and sign in with your account. Once you are in, you should be able to see the dashboard that you created earlier. Now, try to enter the password and see how it works. Once you enter the right password and tap the submit button, it will unlock. And then it will wait for 5 seconds. After that, it will automatically lock once again. If you like this project and if you are really interested in building amazing DIY projects, make sure you subscribe to our channel by hitting the subscribe button right here. See you in the next video.